Happy Future Friday, all my quilting friends. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I appreciate y'all being here. Today we are doing something a little different. We are not actually using our butler system. We are maintaining our butler system. I had a quilting friend ask if we could go over what we need to do to maintain our system. And I was setting up a stitch out to be done and looked down at my frame and my robot and thought this is the perfect time to go over maintaining my system with everybody so that you can maintain your butler, keep it running strong for you and nice and clean because mine is a bit of a mess right now. So I am going to turn you guys around and we're going to go over everything you need to do to keep your system happy and running great for you. Everybody, so we've got my butler in front of me. We've got our display screen up here. And when we come down here, you can see my motor box. And I was putting a design on my display and getting things going and looked down at my motor box and I have a nasty little piece of thread that landed on top of my motor box. And if I don't take care of that, it's gonna wrap itself around my pulley system. And so this is kind of point one that I have to make with maintaining your butler system. Your pulleys are very important for running your belt system, the movement of your carriage. And if we get thread wrapped around these, um, it's gonna throw everything off and cause you problems. So you've got your pulley on top and that runs your Y axis. And then if we come around, I'm gonna go real slow here, the back side of your robot, you've got your pulleys on the back here. All of these little pulleys are very susceptible to threads that may come off the side of your quilt top or if you're clipping threads here off of your machine while you're threading or if you're clipping threads while you're going along your quilting, they can always fall on top of your robot and get caught either on the pulley here on top or on the pulleys that are on the back of your robot. And they might get caught underneath the pulley or around the part with the, I call them teeth or ridges. Um, they could get caught there underneath where your belt goes. You've got kind of those little back areas here on the one that's on the back side, or it get, could get caught here. And if thread gets caught in there, that's gonna cause you problems. So. I want to tell y'all to just make sure that when you're switching your quilts out to be quilted or taking one off your frame, always double check your pulleys. So that is maintenance point number one. Um, maintenance point number two, I like to have a microfiber cloth in my sewing room because a lot of batting dust and thread fuzzies kind of get on here. So I just wipe down my box um, to kind of keep that clean. I don't want dust bunnies or anything to kind of get in any of the, the holes here on my butler and kind of get into the workings of my system. So I use a microfiber cloth and just keep that clean. Um, the other thing that might drop on top of your box, if I pull my machine forward all the way, my bobbin area here hovers over top of my motor box. So I might get a drip of oil on top of this. And so I always make sure I wipe the oil away. I don't want oil sitting on top of this. The really cool thing about your butler is that this is a self-contained system. You do not need to do anything to what's inside. So there is no oiling. You do not have to do anything to grease or oil your pulleys or anything. It's all happy on its own, so don't do anything to it, but keep it kind of dusted off and clean. Um, you may get a little bit of residue on your pulleys from your belts, and that's okay. You just wipe that off. Sometimes you might get um, a little residue on your pulley when it comes to you from us because it's been tested, so it might have a little residue on that pulley. You just wipe that off, but it's all about just keeping it wiped off and clean. 
Uh, the other thing I like to do to make sure with my motor box is making sure every now and then that everything is plugged in and nice and snug. This is kind of moving a lot and vibrating a lot on the frame. I mean, you can kind of see if you follow my cables, it goes down to the floor, but it could get hooked kind of here on the leg or I've got to roll a batting up on my batting bar. So I always make sure that my cables are plugged in nice and tight. And I just constantly check those both on my butler here, on my display up here, and even the power cord on my machine. I don't want to risk any of those coming unplugged while I'm in the middle of quilting. So I always check my cables. Um, with my belts, I always check the tension on my belts. So on my white belt here, this is my X belt, I kind of give it a little nudge and it's got just about an inch of play in it and that's perfect. That's what I want here on my white belt. On my black belt here on the side, I've got about a half an inch in that and that's perfect. So it's just enough wiggle room in it to give me what I need, but not too much where it's loose and floppy. The other thing that I like to do when I'm switching my quilts out is kind of give a good look at the teeth on my belts and make sure that they look nice, clean, even. Sometimes you get thread wrapped around your belts too. So making sure everything looks good. If the teeth on your belts start to look wobbly or aren't straight anymore, if your belt looks stretched in any way, it's time to replace your belt. I've had the belt on this machine for over two years. I maintain it nice. I make sure it's clean. It is not in direct sunlight. You can see my curtains are closed back there so that there's not sunlight on these belts that might warp it or cause any problems. And my belts um, are doing me a great job. Um, so that's just kind of some belt maintenance. I just see, I just picked a fuzzy off of it. Um, the other thing that I do with <coughs> dusting is when I'm doing my motor box, I kind of wipe down my brackets and the rails of my carriage, the wheels on my machine, and your setup might be different than mine, but I try to make sure everything on here is kind of dust free. Everybody knows, I mean, you can see the dust that's in here in my, um, foot. That's all fuzz from my thread. So it's really a matter of just keeping things fuzz free, dust free, really kind of clean. That's always going to help. Even my uh, rails here, I keep those clean with my microfiber cloth and my table. And I am a dog owner and I tend to get a lot of little dog hairs on this. So just keeping all of this dusted and clean is really important. On the display for my machine, I have a different cloth. So this cloth here is what I use to dust my display. And this is actually an eyeglasses cloth. If you look at it real close, you can see those are little eyeglasses. So I always dust my display off with this very gently and lightly. I don't press hard, but this keeps the dust off my display. But if you're like me, you'll kind of have the sunlight or something catch your display and you'll notice fingerprints all over it. Remember that we have natural oils in our fingers or sometimes we may use lotion that might stick to our fingers and we go straight to our robot and we don't even think about it. We touch our display and we might leave a little lotion behind. So that's gonna leave fingerprints. To clean that off, I like to use these little wipes here. They are for cleaning um, screens or glasses lenses. And they are just little wipes. You open them up and wipe your screen down. And that will get all of those fingerprints off of there. You know, because it's a touch screen, we want to keep it as clean as possible so that we don't do any damage to that. So I, I clean that as often as I can. 
So I try to keep my screen clean, I try to keep my table clean, my tracks clean, my carriage clean, and definitely keeping my robot clean here. I try to maintain my belts and make sure that they have the right tension on them at all times, that I've got just enough wiggle room in them, but they're on there nice and solid, and should I notice any need to change them, whether my teeth are looking wobbly, whether my belt is looking stretched or whether there's any deformity in the teeth, I will repl replace those when necessary. Always check your cables, make sure that they're plugged in well, and if you've got little anchors in place, make sure your anchors are stuck in place. Sometimes that sticky lets go, and that might cause your cables to wobble around too. So always make sure everything's in place where it needs to be. So that's kind of the maintenance that I do on a regular basis. I'm gonna admit that I neglected a little bit over the holiday season, but boy am I glad that I saw that little piece of green thread was there before I started stitching out that flower design because I would not want that to have wrapped around that pulley and then all of a sudden I had an error code for some reason and then I'd have to start investigating and figure out what happened. You know, a little piece of thread can cause a lot of trouble, so it's nice to just maintain your system in between quilts or projects that you're working on. Make sure that you keep it dusted, clean, and have all that thread out of the way. I hope this helps my quilting friend who asked questions and anybody out there who had questions about maintaining their system. Nothing much to do but just keeping an eye on things, keeping thread and dust off of it, and just using it in a proper manner. Thanks so much and we'll see you guys soon.